Welcome to another pet portrait with me and this time I'm going to be showing you how I create curly fur. So I'm using a selection of pastel pencils for this piece and as always I start with the eye. I would say for curly fur that this is particularly important because again it gives you your lightest lights with the reflection and the darkest darks with the pupil and you'll see that when I go to create the fur in a moment I really rely on the shadows to make sure that I get the form correct and I make it in a slightly unusual way and this is just me drawing for myself so it gives you a better insight into how I actually work as opposed to when I'm teaching and purposefully trying to break down the steps. Now as always before the eye is finished I do like to give myself the structure of the eye socket. It really helps to make sure that that eye is nicely finished and giving myself some soft edges around uh, the eye with that pastel pencil means that I'm going to be able to blend it into the rest of the underpainting easily. So it's a really good habit to get into. Now I like to use my pencils on the side as you can see here and what I'm doing is just putting in a few of the more important shadows around the eyes before going in with the ivory. So what I'm going to do is create some outlines of the lightest areas of fur with my ivory pencil. This is very much as though I'm just drawing with a HB pencil at this stage. I'm giving myself some directional lines so that I've got a bit of a flow and then over the top of this and around it as you can see I'm going in with my mid-tones. So instead of working with just the mid-tones and ending up with something very flat which I then need to get the shadows and the highlights into, I can glaze over the top of some of these highlights that I've put in. It gives me some direction, it gives me a bit of lift and a bit of form and direction and it also makes sure that some of the highlights are already blended in so I'm getting some nice soft effects in there. For me this is quite an easy way to work. It means that I won't get lost within the pet portrait because I pick out those really important areas early on as you can see. I've put in those lightest lights I go back over and re-establish them in a minute and then I can head over and glaze which simply means that I'm putting layers of pastel on top with those mid-tones and those lighter tones and instead of them being completely flat we're getting that slight lift from the ivory beneath it. Now another thing that I do in this pet portrait and something that I love to do with curly fur in particular is really work between my warm and my cools. The local colour for this would be an orange and either side of that we have yellow and we have red. Now I like to take the red dark. Red works quite well if we make it um, a darker tone whereas yellow doesn't work well at all but it will go light for me. So you can see that for the shadows I go into the reds and the purples. I have quite a nice selection of reds and purples from pastel pencils and they complement this small selection of chocolate pencils that I've got. I don't actually have that many chocolatey pencils so I find it really useful to head into the reds. So you can see here what I've done is carry on in the same manner. I've been working with that ivory pencil, I've glazed over the top, I've established the shadows and then I've worked in more highlights as you can see now. It's given me something that's very fluid and soft. Whenever I'm doing curly fur I never make myself stick to the reference photo. I look for the general areas of light and dark, I get inspiration for the flow of the fur but I never spend stupid amounts of time trying to get every single piece of fur in the right place. If I do that personally I find that my drawings end up really wooden and stiff and we don't want that at all. We want to make sure that this looks super soft and natural. Now I've gone in and put the nose in at a later stage for this drawing. If I was teaching I would have probably put it in earlier and the only reason for that is to make sure that it nests properly into the rest of the painting. I'm quite happy to go around as you can see here with a darker pencil and gently pull out small shadows to show that the fur is coming off skin and the nose is part of the skull. But if you're a beginner probably put it in a little bit earlier you might find that easier. Now one of the limitations of this reference photo was that area of chin and you'll see in a moment that I spend quite a bit of time on the ears to get around that huge shadow that is on the reference photo. It wasn't particularly helpful and it made finishing the portrait a little bit tricky. But something I like to do with cockapoos and with spaniels because of that lovely curly fur is to use the ears to gently end the pet portrait. It gives it a really soft fluid finish and it also means that our attention is directed back to the eyes because the fur won't be grabbing that much attention at the bottom. I make all of the tones fairly close together and I make the edges very soft. Always return to the eyes when you're finishing off a pet portrait to make sure that the blacks are pitch black and the whites are crystal white. For a deeper dive on curly fur, why don't you try out this mini masterclass here?
If you want to find out more about becoming a pet portrait artist, I've got loads of content on my channel, not to mention some masterclasses which will be linked below for you. They're coming out in 2024, so if they're not there yet, just jump on the waiting list.